Go 1.25 is out with a lot of improvements in the implementation of the toolchain, the runtime and the libraries. First of all, this version brings significant cleanup to the language's type system. When generics were introduced in Go 1.18, they came with several new type concepts. These are all necessary to make generics work in a statically typed language. Among these concepts, the Go team also introduced a new internal idea called the core type. This was more of a behind-the-scenes tool for the compiler meant to simplify how Go handled operations involving generic types. But in practice, this led to confusion, complexity and inconsistency, so in 1.25, core types are gone from the language spec. Instead of relying on the abstract idea of a core type, the spec now just explains things in plain language with separate notes for generic code. But there's plenty more going on in this release beyond the spec. One of the most important additions is the new green tea garbage collector that improves performance by reducing GC overhead in real-world programs up to 40%. The idea behind it is really simple. Instead of scanning individual objects like the old implementation, green tea scans entire memory blocks called spans. Each span is 8 kilobytes, aligned and full of same size small objects. When the GC sees a pointer to an object, it flags it for scanning and queues the entire span. This leads to better memory spatial locality, fewer cache misses and less CPU waste. You have to opt into it, but if your app does a lot of allocations, it is definitely worth trying. And if you're into writing performance critical code, the compiler can now allocate more slices on the stack. Normally, when you create a slice in Go, the slice header lives wherever you declare it, but the underlying array data is often heap allocated. In 1.25, the compiler got smarter and it can now detect that the slice's underlying array doesn't need to live beyond the function call. In such cases, it places that array directly on the stack. This is a behind-the-scenes optimization, but it speeds things up and reduces garbage collector pressure. The runtime is also more container-aware. If you are running your app inside Kubernetes or any other container system that uses control groups, Go will respect the CPU limits set by the container and adjust accordingly. This prevents the runtime from overcommitting CPU threads and it updates dynamically if the environment changes. You can disable this behavior, but for most workloads, it's just going to work better out of the box. The toolchain also got some quality of life updates. The Go command supports a new ignore directive in Go.mod, which lets you exclude directories from package matching. That's handy in big code bases where not every directory is a Go package you care about. You can also use a subdirectory as the root of a module now, which makes life easier for teams working with monorepos or multi-project repositories. What's interesting is that Go still manages to improve performance in its core libraries, and its new experimental JSON implementation is significantly faster. The new JSON library is backwards compatible in terms of behavior, but error messages might be slightly different. You still get your well-known Marshall and Unmarshall, but now you also get a lot more utility functions, streaming decoders, and composable options. You get proper formatting tools, case-insensitive matching, better tag semantics, and decoding up to 10 times faster in some real-world cases. So if you're parsing a lot of JSON, especially in high-traffic services, this is worth benchmarking. And, finally, debugging in Go will get much easier thanks to the newly added Flight Recording API. This is a tracing technique that collects execution data, such as function calls and memory allocations, within a sliding window that's limited by size or duration, all of which can be configured. Then, when a significant event occurs, a snapshot of the last few seconds of the trace is saved to a file. The bottom line is that Go 1.25 doesn't come with any big flashy changes, but the language is cleaner, the runtime is faster, tooling is smarter, and the ecosystem is more maintainable. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.